Welcome to the Crunch McDabbles Show. I'm your host, Crunch McDabbles. This is the only show where we break down your favorite Pathfinder builds. Today's show, the Reaction Tank. I wanted to make a really defensive champion tank and splash in some swashbuckler and also weave in a little hobgoblin ancestry, but I didn't want to make a hobgoblin. So I made a human that takes the adopted ancestry feat and all that uh, to work in, into this build Though there has to be some backstory, there has to be some reason this character has access to the Hobgoblin ancestry. So I came up with this. There was a Hobgoblin named Tigo Garouche. He was basically a pirate raiding with all his Hobgoblin buddies, but he was always drawn to the civilized world. Wherever they docked in ports that would allow them to trade and walk openly as Hobgoblins, he always liked the peace there in the, in the world compared to the constant destruction with his hobgoblin people. So he ultimately leaves them, leaving the hobgoblins to their own fate, and he accepts his own fate as a hobgoblin in the world. He takes a job as a teacher in a small training academy, putting to good use the battle skills of his hobgoblin ancestry. And everything's great for a while, until one day a young girl arrives. Now, this isn't unusual. The school is mostly runaways and vagrants, and they're receiving just enough training to be cell swords or caravan guards. But this girl, she ends up becoming his best student, and he begins to reveal more and more about the ways of the hobgoblins to her. But it has an unexpected consequence. Without the innate discipline of the hobgoblins, the girl becomes a fountain of rage. You know, she's a barbarian. A rage that was probably always there, but that she couldn't contain any longer. And so she goes completely crazy. She murders everyone at the academy. She spares no one. She burns the place down. The only person she spares is the hobgoblin. And for who knows why? Who knows why she spared him? And so the hobgoblin tries to track her down. He spent his whole life in pursuit of her feeling he, having created her, having made her, is the only one who can take her down. And this might be true because he's a pretty great swashbuckler, but he's now becoming old, so he agrees to train one more student, having found a new understanding of his people and his mistakes he made with his first student. He will teach a new style, this time really focused on patience and discipline. And so this is the reaction tank. We start out with the human ancestry. We take the versatile heritage as our heritage, gaining a first level general feat. With the first level general feat, we take adopted ancestry. This doesn't give us very much, except now we can take hobgoblin feats as ancestry feats in addition to the human ancestry feats. We like the hobgoblin feats for our tank build here. At level three, with our general feat, we take ancestral paragon. This gives us a first level ancestry feat and we take Remorseless Lash. This catches us back up with the straight up Hobgoblin now at level three. And at level five with our ancestry feat, we take Agonizing Rebuke. This allows us to deal mental damage to targets that we successfully demoralize. Now it only adds a D4 damage until level seven. When we become master in, in intimidation, then it moves up to a 2d4, and at level 15, it increases to 3d4. So it's not huge, but it, it is a nice passive source of damage that targets incur until they shake off their fear. And we're going to try real hard to make it hard for them to do that. Now, this build uses a tower shield, and each round it uses an action to raise the shield and another action to take cover. This gives the plus four circumstance bonus to armor class, which is great. That's really high. And so at first level, we start off as a champion and we like the lawful good paladin. I like that reaction the best and why not? Lawful good is great. For our first level class feat, we take deity's domain. This gives us uh, a focus spell from our deity, but it also more importantly gives us an extra focus point, which we can use both of those focus points for lay on hands. And since we're a human, we get to take another first level class feat with our ancestry feat, Natural Ambition. 
And we take desperate prayer with this one too, so we can regain a focus point as a free action once a day. All this means more lay on hands for us to heal ourselves back up. At second level, we switch over to Swashbuckler, taking the Swashbuckler Dedication. Now to qualify for the Swashbuckler Dedication, we need 14 Dexterity and 14 Charisma. So our starting stats we set at 18 Strength, 14 Dex, 14 Charisma, 12 Constitution, and the rest 10. And that works out okay, that's not bad. With the Swashbuckler Dedication, take the Braggart Style, this allows us to get panache when we tumble through or demoralize. And since with our tower shield, we probably aren't going to tumble through anyone. Basically, it is just demoralize, which is fine because, because we're going to be doing that all the time. But panache doesn't really give us much on this build, just a five feet increase to our speed and a plus one circumstance bonus to demoralize. And since we won't be doing any finishers, as soon as we demoralize in combat, we get that and we keep it until the end, which isn't bad. At fourth level, we take the basic flare archetype feat, allowing us to take a first or second level swashbuckler feat. And well, we know what we want. We want antagonize. Now, when we demoralize something, they can't shake their frightened condition unless they make a hostile action against us. And at fifth level, with the agonizing rebuke we got from our ancestry, they'll be taking damage at the start of their turn when they're demoralized. And with the remorse of slash, we can keep them from being frightened by hitting them too, creating a no-win situation for a monster, giving them a little bit of uh, mental damage and making it really hard for them to get rid of that frightened condition. At 6th level, we take Opportune Ripost from the Swashbuckler Archetype Feet List. Now, if something critically misses us, we can make an attack of opportunity against them. And since we're playing as a champion with the Tower Shield and planning on taking cover each round, and we're antagonizing monsters to hit us, we increase our chances of getting these opportunity attacks. At 8th level, we switch back to the Paladin Feet Line because there are great things here. We take Quick Block for a bonus Shield Block reaction each round. This is more defense for us. At 10th level, we take Devoted Focus, so we can gain two focus points back when we do our 10 minutes of devotion between combats, which means we can consistently use two Lay on Hands each combat, and once a day we can get one more with the Desperate Prayer. At 12th level, we take Divine Wall to create difficult terrain for our enemies all around us. We just want to make things difficult out there, and this works. At 14th level, we take Divine Reflexes for another reaction we can use each round specifically for our Champion's reaction. This means each round we have a Shield Block reaction, we have a Champion's reaction, and we have a regular reaction we can use for anything. Since we're building around being defensive on our turn and then using our reactions each round, now we have a bunch of extra reactions we can use to be effective. It's almost like having six actions each round. At 16th level, we take Attack of Opportunity. There might be something better out there at 16th level, but I like this. At 18th level, we take Rejuvenating Touch. This one's awesome. Now our Lay on Hands add Fast Healing, a bunch of Fast Healing for 10 rounds or something. It's great. And at 20th level, we take Shield Paragon. Now we don't need to spend an action raising our shield each round. It happens automatically, so we just spend one action each round taking cover, and then we can do whatever we want with the other two actions. Make two demoralize attempts each round, or whatever we want to do. The end result here is each combat we raise our shield and take cover, and with our third action we either move into place, make an attack, cast lay on hands, or use a demoralize against a target within 30 feet. It's pretty boring, except we're setting ourselves up to be really difficult. After level 16, we have regular attacks of opportunity if a creature moves around us. If we take damage, we can shield block with that reaction right from level 1. And our shield has a plus 2 hardness and increased hit points and broken threshold from the spirit ally within it that we got at level 3. And we could do this an extra time each round after level 8. If an ally within 15 feet is hit, we can use a reaction, a champion reaction, to mitigate that damage and take an attack at the creature if it is within our reach. And if we hit, they can't lose their Frightened Condition. And after level 9, we add in our Charisma Modifier and Persistent Good Damage on this hit, which will be 4 at level 10 
and 5 at level 20. Also, at level 11, all your allies, including rogues, I just include them because their attacks are pretty good, they can use a reaction to make an attack, albeit an attack at minus 5, but that's pretty good. Good benefit. And after level 14, we can do this reaction an extra time each round, so that's great. After level 6, with the opportune riposte, if a creature attacks us and critically misses, we can use a reaction to attack them with opportune riposte. This ability is more important on this build because not only does this build turtle up behind the tower shield, but paladins also have the best armor class progression in the game with the shield. At 7th level, they move to expert. At 13th level, they move to master. And at 17th level, they become legendary. Monks have about the same on armor progression. It's a little better. They become master at 5th level instead of 7th level, but it's otherwise the same. But they're not using a shield, though. The idea here is to be heavily defended, to try and force targets to attack us, to mitigate that damage with shield block when they do hit us, to heal the damage back up when they do damage us, and the whole time be ticking in damage a little bit here and a little bit there with reactions, with agonizing rebuke, with persistent good damage, and with one attack or reaction attack each round. And that is the reaction tank. Yeah, this has been the Crunch McDabble Show. I've been your host, Crunch McDabbles. Go watch my friends over at Galarian In-Depth and the local disaster tour guide. They both mentioned me on their shows recently. They're both super nerdy. They're exactly the way Pathfinder's meant to be. I love these shows. It's two of my favorites. Go check them out.